Welcome and thank you for joining us for another episode of Studio 901. I'm Kiana Faircloth. You should already be accustomed to Studio 901 because this is GCTV's greatest exploration of the art that is among us. Studio 901 spotlights artists that are creating here in the DMV. With us, you'll discover some of the area's greatest treasures, some of our best kept secrets, and hear some never before told stories about living the creative life. On this edition of Studio 901, we are joined by not only one gallery director, but two. Emily Arden of Recreative Spaces and Kate Taylor Davis of the Anacostia Arts Center. First up on the show today is Kate Taylor Davis. Kate has worked for and with DC area arts organizations since 1999. She joined the staff of Arch Development Corporation in May of 2013 to become the first director of the Anacostia Arts Center. Previously, she was the director of external relations for Imagination Stage, chief marketing and communications officer at Olney Theater Center, assistant director of education and programs at the Association of Children's Museums, and she interned with the Kennedy Center and the District of Columbia Arts Center. She's an occasional lecturer on the topics of marketing and event planning at local universities, and Kate has served as a committee member for the Arts and Humanities Council of Montgomery County, vice president for the League of Washington Theaters, keynote panelist for Theater Communications Group, and a grant panelist for Arlington County. In her spare time, she helps produce offbeat art events. Kate holds an MA in Arts Management from the American University and a BA in English from the University of Michigan. Welcome to Studio 901, Kate Taylor Davis. Oh my goodness, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Here at Studio 901, we like to ask our guests two questions right off the bat. Okay. First, <laughs> at what age did you start being creative? Oh, I, I think that, I think, uh, birth. I mean, is that is that too far back? Oh, of course not. I mean, playing with the piano, dancing, doing performances for, for friends and family. I actually had, ran my own art gallery out of my parents' room of my, my drawings. So wow. I charged family. Did you really? Yeah, I think it was maybe five cents or one cent a painting. So it was, it was pretty, it was a deal. They got it on the ground floor. Awesome. Well, what are some of the artists that inspire you to do what you do? You called yourself an art enabler. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not an artist myself, um, but certainly I love facilitating um, other people to creatively express themselves whether it's visual arts or performing arts or just a really great idea they have yeah. that they need help executing. I, I like to help with the process there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of who inspires me, I mean, I get inspiration from everyone, mostly people who have ideas. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, because so, so many people, we just do what we've always been doing or we get stuck into a, into a routine. Uh, it's the people who have these wild ideas that really want and have passion to see them through that I think is most inspiring. Absolutely. Tell our audience all about the Anacostia Arts Center. How did this beautiful place come about and whose idea was it? Sure, so um, we've, we're, we just turned two, which is kind of exciting. We're now two years old. And um, it was actually the brainchild of our CEO, Dwayne Gaudier. This was a job training site for many years. And before that, it was an old Woolworths building. And um, after running it as a job training site, uh, Dwayne got disillusioned with how that would help revitalize the historic neighborhood of Anacostia. Started thinking about other things to do. He opened Enfleur Gallery, which is just two doors down, mm -hmm. um, in 2007. And then um, was thinking about how to do this place differently. Talked to the community, asked them what they wanted to see here. They said, please, no more social services in the neighborhood. We have plenty of those. We want the amenities that our counterparts in other areas have. So some place to eat at night, some place to go hear music, some place to go see theater and, and performance. Wow. So the Art Center idea came through. When we return, we'll chat more with Kate Taylor Davis about how she got involved with the Anacostia Art Center and what she does as director of this space. Stay close, we'll be right back. This is Studio 901, only on DCTV.
our neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart does a sea race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. I'm Drew Brees, and being a dad means the world to me. And one of the most important things any parent can do is make sure their kids get active at least 60 minutes each day. Studies show that physical activity not only helps kids stay healthy, it can enhance important skills like concentration and problem solving, which can improve academic performance. This means physical activity can help your kids in the most important game of all, life. Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm here with Kate Taylor Davis, the director of the Anacostia Arts Center. Now, Kate, how did you get involved with the Anacostia Arts Center, and what do you do here as director? Sure, it was, it was just lucky um, that, I, that I came here to work. Um, I'd been working in marketing communications for about 12 years, and just was ready to do something a little bit bigger, um, even if it was in a smaller organization. So I sort of made a list of fantasy jobs for myself, and one of them was running an art center. And literally the next week, this job posting like popped up, and I thought, "Gee, well, let's get." <laughs> yeah. This is this is a little fortuitous. So I applied, and uh, apparently they thought it was okay, and so I'm here. And I was the first director that they hired, and this place was basically um, just a white, mm -hmm. empty, and empty rooms, a series of empty rooms. And it was really exciting to be able to start thinking about the content of what belongs here, working with small business owners to convince them to start a business or, or move their business to Anacostia, outreach to theater companies who wanted to perform in our black box theater to convince them to give the neighborhood a shot, mm. talking to local artists, uh, being an amenity for them. We run, in addition to what we do here, we run artist studios around uh, the corner of Martin Luther King. Wow. So really a lot of... Um, a combination of experiments in the first year of uh, what would fly, what would be really popular here, um, what the neighborhood would enjoy, what would bring in people from other parts of town. Um, so I would say year one was really about just trying everything. Mm -hmm. And year two became about more curating it. Mm. So it's like, oh, this went really well, let's do more of this. This didn't go so well, so let's do less of that. Yeah. Um, and so I think my role is, uh, in large measure, uh, thinking about the entire ecosystem of the art center. Hmm. What does well for businesses? How can they stay in business? How can we help the neighborhood economy? And um, how can we do really great, exciting art? Awesome. You know, I noticed when I talk to creatives and creative mm -hmm. people, they've always written down a plan for themselves or what it is they want to do. And it makes it a little bit easier, like you said, to see those dreams come into fruition. Yeah. What is your mission for the Anacostia Art Center? Well, I sort of have a, uh, sort of a decision matrix. I don't know that I've written it down. Maybe, maybe I should try okay. that. <laughs> but a, a decision matrix of you know what would be bring in a lot of people, what would be high art, what would be appealing to the neighborhood, and what would bring in uh, dollars to the local economy. Mm. And so I sort of it's it's a it's a mix yeah. of those of those things. And I'm hoping in our first year we brought in twenty five thousand people, which considering we're just under ten thousand square feet. And, uh, and we were brand new, I thought was pretty incredible. So wow. I'm hoping to see those numbers climb. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that our businesses uh, that currently are here, and we've got three fashion boutiques, a massage studio, a yoga studio, and a cafe. I'm hoping that they flourish and want to actually move out, because we're a bit of an incubator space, and move into one of the storefronts in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we're hoping to be a catalyst for economic revitalization um, in the historic neighborhood. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's just been really wonderful so far. So it seems like you're literally feeding the mind, body, and the soul here. Sometimes. Some, yeah. some good days feel like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we all, we all want every day to be a good Absolutely. day. Absolutely. You deal a lot with creative people um, here in the DMV. What is your manifesto, you'd say, creatively, personally? Yeah, well, I don't know, that I, I don't know if it's quite a manifesto, but um, I certainly feel that art needs to be fun, like, like the, that the experience needs to be fun or needs to have you um, react in some way. Mm -hmm. Really well done art that doesn't move me isn't good for, isn't what I personally enjoy. Yeah. I need it to elicit a reaction, I need it to cause mm -hmm. a ruckus, mm -hmm. and I need it to be a sticky experience. So something that I'm going to keep coming back to and in my mind, or the visitors are going to keep coming back to and remember that. Like, that's going to be a memory 
that they have that they will associate with Anacostia. I like that, a sticky experience. Sticky experience. experience. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be back with more from Kate Taylor Davis of the Anacostia Art Center on Studio 901, only on DCTV. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T. Fast. Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm here with Kate Taylor Davis, the director of the Anacostia Art Center. Now, Kate, how can artists and business owners get involved with the Anacostia Art Center? Well, I mean, there's myriad ways to do it. Um, we are um, always looking for new people who want to present their performances mm -hmm. here, um, dance, theater, film, spoken word, you name it, music. Uh, they should definitely um, get a hold of us. And our website's anacostiaartcenter.com. Org, and we're also on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So that would be a very easy way to reach out. We try to be very accessible. Um, we also have a small waiting list of businesses who would like to open up here. We're looking for uh, businesses with some sort of creative component. Mm -hmm. We have uh, six art galleries, which are um, small business spaces. Um, and so they should let us know and come for a tour. We also run the, um, the artist studios around the corner, so if people are interested in workspace, they can give us a call. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, just come, just come, check us out. We have uh, many of our events are free. There's lots of things to do here. We do uh, six to ten art openings a year, um, and I think you guys took some some great video of the last one we had. So please join our email list, come on over, um, and just be part of the community. Again, thank you, Kate Taylor Davis, for sitting down and chatting with me. I wish you the best of luck, Thank you. as well as the Anacostia Arts Center. And when we return, I'll chat with Emily Arden of Recreative Spaces and get up close and personal with her. You're watching Studio 901, only on DCTV. Thank you, dear. Well, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's. Have you had sex in this car yet? Joining me now on Studio 901 is Emily Arden, the co founder and director of Recreative Spaces. Creative soul, dancer, educator, and idealist, Emily has a passion for all things slightly off the beaten path. Her wanderings have taken her from California to New Orleans, Washington State to Philadelphia. She continues to return to Washington, D.C., her second home, where she has had the privilege to work with a multitude of artists, from DJs to chefs, to create entertaining and thought-provoking events and opportunities. She has also been deeply involved in working with young people in both traditional educational settings as well as in arts-related programming. Emily is passionate about supporting art and artists as well as making art accessible to communities. This and her love of designing spaces, she did study architecture after all, have been her driving forces behind recreative spaces. Welcome to Studio 901, Emily Arden. Thank you, it's great to be here. Thank you for being here. Right off the bat, we like to ask our guest one question. At what age did you start being creative? 
I started dancing at a really early age. I was about three years old. Wow. So um, creative practice has always been a part of, of my life. Um, I started this project or working with artists of other um, mediums and uh, really trying to create this business about a decade ago. Wow, now you noticed I said what age you started being creative because you do a number of different things. You're multi-talented, you started dancing at three, you're an architect, you do visual art as well? I do not, and uh, I uh, thought that I was going to be an architect. I did not finish school. I went um, and said uh, directly back to dance. So those have all been passions of mine mm -hmm. and things that I bring to my work, but my, um, my artistic practice really is dance. Oh, wow. Who is your inspiration or some of the artists that have inspired you to create in all forms? Well, first and foremost, I come from a, a family of uh, creative thinkers, um, writers, artists, um, designers. So I sort of was brought up in just um, a, a, a way of thinking creatively mm -hmm. um, and looking at the world through that lens. Um, when I was young, uh, Julia Morgan, um, the architect, was a really uh, big influence of mine, a, a female architect um, doing really incredible work, mm -hmm. um, and uh, thought that I was going to follow in her footsteps. Um, yeah. That was really my goal. Um, another artist that really inspired me at a young age was Nick Bantock, um, who wrote a series of books um, that combined both letter writing with um, graphics, with design um, in a really unique way, and that has sort of helped to shape my idea of, of working um, with different mediums. Mm -hmm. um, I would say these days I'm inspired on a daily basis, and I'm really fortunate to um, call my friends and family and um, those working with me um, creatives in their own right. And so I, I, I literally have inspiration every day from um, different corners of my life. Wow, that's awesome. Now tell us about recreative spaces and how did you and your business partner, John Kagia, come up with the idea in creating this space for artists? So for me, uh, it started as uh, this idea of wanting to organically bring together artists of different genres. It's mm -hmm. something I've always been interested in. So whether it's a DJ with dancers or chef with, um, with film producers, um, what happens in those organic spaces is just really interesting and, um, and literally building a space that um, can hold that kind of programming mm -hmm. um, is what has inspired me throughout this project. Um, John and I met about um, almost two years ago now and uh, we were both working on very similar paths but from a very different perspective. So mine, uh, my background obviously is performing arts, John comes from the visual art world, yes. he's a photographer um, and we were both interested in this idea of creating space that was accessible and um, available for artists and creatives of all genres and all levels. So really um, not about being a, a, a gallery per se or a, a theater per se, but um, a space that um, allowed everyone to be able to, to think creatively. Yeah. So we started this project um, and, and iterations of it happened in our home, in uh, other businesses, um, and we, we teamed up with the Mankiti Group a real estate company about a year ago. Um, so we've been able to work with them in their unleased commercial properties to wow. stage this programming. Um, we are now into our third space and moving um, into other spaces. I know we'll get to that later. Um, but uh, what's been great is being able to create these organic spaces um, with a, a partner in real estate that really understands the yeah. need for creative programming and, um, and wants to see that flourish in the communities they're a part of. Awesome. Now when we return, we'll talk more with Emily Arden about how she chooses artists when curating exhibits. You're watching Studio 901. Stay right there. We have a big problem and we need your help. It's happening on college campuses, at bars, at parties, even in high schools. It's happening to our sisters and our daughters. Our wives and our friends. It's called sexual assault and it has to stop. We have to stop it. So listen up. If she doesn't consent, or if she can't consent, it's rape, it's assault. It's a crime, it's wrong. If I saw it happening and I was taught, you have to do something about it. If I saw it happening, I speak up. If I saw it happening, I'd never blame her. I'd help her. Because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. We need all of you to be part of the solution. This is about respect, it's about responsibility. It's up to all of us to put an end to sexual assault. And that starts with you. Because one is too many. Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm here chatting with Emily Arden, who's the co-founder and director of Recreative Spaces. 
Now, Emily, what do you look for when looking for artists when you're curating exhibits for recreative spaces? I would say passion and heart are the biggest things. So we're looking for artists who are driven and have an excitement about what they're doing. Yes. Um, we are the work we do is socially conscious, and so we're looking for artists that want to make a positive difference mm -hmm. using using those art forms. Um, and it's about a feeling, and it's about making sure it's the right fit. Now, Emily, what advice would you give artists when they're coming to you in order to have their work displayed here at Recreative Spaces? I think uh, the first thing is to be yourself um, and uh, let that experience and excitement and, and um, passion shine through. Um, I will say that you know we we are we're certainly not. Um, a usual gallery and so we do um, things a little bit differently around here and we're mm -hmm. always looking for innovation and creativity in the kind of work that we display yes. but we are a business we are an organization so there is a level of um, professionalism for, thank you <laughs> that's what I was looking for a level of professionalism that um, that is is required um, so you know making sure that uh, correspondence is um, appropriate and um, you know being able to if not have a website at least have links or some sort of um, documentation of the work that mm -hmm. we can view absolutely now tell me about the type of work that you look for I know you aren't necessarily always looking for things that hang on the wall right sure so what other mediums are you open to from artists we are open to all all forms of art and so in curating shows it's not only about the visual art as you said but also about you know furniture and crafts oh. and um, you know books or um, other other types of performing arts programming as well so we um, start working with artists um, once they have an idea um, and that could be anything from a comedy show to a poetry event um, with art interspersed, interspersed in between um, so I think that again the biggest thing is really just um, being true to the, the kind of work that artists uh, are looking to do mm -hmm. um, and to come with a, a, some sort of proposal or idea to get started with us. We're going to take a short break but we're going to come back and talk more with Emily Arden of Creative Spaces. You're watching Studio 901 only on DCTV. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Welcome back to Studio 901. I'm chatting with Emily Arden, who is the co-founder and director of Recreative Spaces. Now, Emily, do you feel like the gallery scene has changed at all in the last five, ten years or so? I'll be honest, um, my background is not necessarily directly within uh, the gallery scene. I will say that the creative scene in D.C. and around yeah. the country has changed substantially. Um, I moved away from D.C. for about four years. I was in Philadelphia. I got back about two years ago, okay. and I've been really pleasantly surprised to see um, the kinds of creative programming that is taking place here. Um, I think uh, you know there's a lot more opportunity for artists to establish themselves, um, obviously with you know, social media with online presence, um, mm -hmm. but even within spaces in the city, um, being able to to really um, make something for themselves and make innovative work um, along with other organizations. Awesome. Now, do you feel like where do you? I guess my next question would be, where do you see the future of gallery art going? What does that look like in your mind? I think we're in a really good place. Um, and again, it's this is sort of a subset of the, the gallery world. Um, you know, I think obviously museums and, and established galleries play a really important role in, in the um, creative landscape and will continue to. Um, I think what's really exciting is this innovation between real estate developers, mm -hmm. um, sort of reconfiguring and reusing repurposing buildings yeah. um, and Pop -up yeah, absolutely are cool. absolutely mm -hmm. um, and innovative um, approaches so um, one of our spaces in is in Mount Rainier which is part of the Gateway Arts District um, and the Art Lives Here initiative so there there are people that are forming um, programming and policy and sort of banding together um, to offer these unique and and sort of spectacular um, 
ideas and uh, places for people to congregate and be creative, which I think is so important for life in general. And so I'm really mm -hmm. excited to see where that continues to go. Now, Emily, what does the future hold for recreative spaces? What can we expect to see? So we're always dreaming big here, uh, thinking big. So we will have um, not one, but two spaces. Mm -hmm. um, one that will be really uh, dedicated to a workspace um, for artists and creatives, and one that will be more of an event and gallery and programming space. Uh, we also have the Uprising Festival Festival, um, that is a yearly festival uh, along Rhode Island Avenue um, that is part of the programming for Rhode Island Avenue Main Street. So that will continue. Look mm -hmm. for that next summer. Um, we are uh, going to be introducing an art bus. Um, so it will mm -hmm. be uh, literally a rotating um, and revolving uh, moving art um, vehicle um, that we can take to different sites. Um, so that will be making its debut sometime next year. Um, and for me, personally, uh, my goal is to uh, have recreative spaces in California. Um, I wow. miss I miss my roots, I miss my home, um, my first home. So um, this DC programming will continue to happen um, and hopefully in conjunction with a West Coast version as well. Awesome, I can see recreative spaces going nationwide. Global. <laughs> I really like that, awesome. Can you tell us where folks can find out more about Recreative Spaces? Absolutely. So we are online at recreativespaces.com. We are also on all the social things. So uh, Instagram and Facebook at Recreative Spaces. Mm -hmm. Twitter is at Recreative Space Singular. Uh, we ran out of characters. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We'll be right back. This is Studio 901. Thank you for tuning into Studio 901. It's been a delight sitting down and talking with Emily Arden of Recreative Spaces. Thank you for having me. And Kate Taylor Davis of Anacostia Art Center on this edition of Studio 901. They are both truly a blessing to have here in the DMV where they are making avenues for the arts to thrive in the city. Remember, Studio 901 spotlights emerging artists from all over the DMV that are creating and performing right here in our own backyard. If you want to find out more about what you saw today, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at YourDCTV, or visit our website at dctv.org. Before you leave, I want to leave you with this quote from actor, filmmaker, and composer Charlie Chaplin. There are more valid facts and details in works of art than there are in the history books. Join us for another episode of Studio 901, where we just might spotlight you. I'm Kiana Faircloth. Until next time.